upon the Bible study tonight, Reverend Coker, sir, we pray for you. Father, we come before you in Jesus' name. We thank you for each one that's here. Father, we ask you to help Pastor Polk as he teaches your word and imparts your word by your Holy Spirit, imparts your word to each heart and life tonight. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now remember, we've been talking about it. Okay. Remember what tomorrow is. <laughs> Doomsday. It's February the 14th. Hey, listen, February the 14th. It's the state of Arizona's birthday. Ah, yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. Okay, so make sure you get some chef flowers and yep. send them to the Capitol. <laughs> <laughs> oh. We came to stay in 1912 on February the 14th, so it's 112, 124 years old. No, 112 years old. Yes. Well, let's get yeah. this right. Oh. I told you I went to school in Texas. <laughs> but anyway, it is Valentine's Day. Amen. Okay, now, you know, we don't, uh, we're learning this in this Bible study not to judge people by what they deem to be important or unimportant. As long as it's not sin. Yes. Right. And there are people that won't observe these kind of holidays. Hey, that's their opinion. Right. Okay? Doesn't make them unsaved or, uh, okay? I don't think it's a big deal personally, but teach their own. Okay? And, you know, if you're going to make a relationship work, you got to keep the fire burning. Yes. All right. Okay, so I'll just put my personal opinion out there. But anyway, we've been learning how we are to deal with the weaker believer. And we know that Paul was primarily dealing with beliefs of keeping dietary laws and Sabbaths, holy days okay, that were given of the law of Moses. Okay, we have both Jew and Gentile believers in this church in Rome. Okay, but he's also dealing with okay, some problems that arose with the Gentiles. Okay, that there were things, there were uh, places that that you could go to in markets and people would offer things to their idols and sell that meat okay, in the marketplace. He told, and he told us as we read there that we're not to uh, ask any questions for conscience sake. Okay? I believe we read that out of 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Okay, And, um, you know, the gist of what we're learning from chapter 15 is that we don't want to do anything that's going to offend people. We're not deliberately trying to offend people. No. Okay, we're not to be selfish. We're not to be uh, unconcerned about what bothers other people. <coughs> now, on the contrary, we should be concerned. Okay, if something bothers someone, whether, um, you know, we believe that or not, let's be mindful of them. Their attitude should not be, well, tough for them. Okay, they should now just suck it up and drive on. Shouldn't be our attitude. Okay, we need to be mindful of one another. Okay, we have the supreme example of Jesus. That's the way Jesus was. Okay. We're the ones that deserve to be reproached. Jesus didn't commit any sin. There's not even any guile in his mouth. He didn't even say anything that was wrong. Okay? But, brother and sister, he was reproached on our behalf. And he took judgment in our place. He preferred us over himself. You know, we taught to do that in the Word of God, that we are to prefer one another in love. Yeah. Okay? We are to put others okay, before ourselves. Their welfare, their good. You know, we're getting ready to have uh, Valentine's tomorrow. And that really is a good a building block mm -hmm. in a relationship. Yeah. 
And let me not be selfish. I don't always have to be right. Okay? Yes. Some things don't matter. Okay? You have to choose your battles. And there are things that, that do matter. You need to stand up for those for those things, but some things don't matter. Okay, why should we have issues one with another? Especially in a Christian family. Okay, we're both are believers. Okay. I want to do everything I can to help my wife to succeed as a Christian. I don't want to be a stumbling block to her. And I want to help her because the, the better she is, you know what? The better I'm going to be. Yes. All right. Okay, we're a team. We're one flesh. Yeah. Okay, we're in this together. Yes, sir. Okay, we need to be headed in the same direction. Okay, so as, uh, you know, uh, she's not only my wife, but she's a sister in the Lord, right? I'm not only her husband, I'm a brother. I'm a fellow Christian. We're both children of God. And we should think that way about one another, okay? We should be mindful of one another to help one another, okay, not... Not trying to do things to deliberately offend or to put a stumbling block in front of someone else. Someone else, you know, we're not to we're not to uh, seek revenge on people. Amen. Okay. We're not to to try to get back at people. We're to forgive the way that Christ has forgiven us. Yes, sir. Okay, that's the way we are to be. Okay, so uh, we're not to cause someone to offend or to stumble. We put them first. We're not to judge. Okay, pray for people. Pray for one another. Well, they should like what I like. Well, not everybody's the same. That's right. Okay, we're all different. Okay, just because... Someone doesn't like something that you like doesn't mean that they're wrong. Amen. It means that they're different. Okay? All right. So let's uh, go on now. So we went on in this, in this, the end of chapter 15, and Paul showed some, and we read some proofs of his ministry. And he also stated that God called him to be a minister to the Gentiles. Okay? So he was... He was letting both Jew and Gentile believer know this is of God. The proof is there. You've seen what God has done. You've seen the miracles. Okay, you've seen God's hand at work in his ministry. Okay, not only that, but he began to quote scripture from the Old Testament that proved that God had always planned on bringing the Gentiles into his plan of salvation. Okay? So, for the Jews, okay, to look down upon the Gentile people, well, you're not a Jew. You have no right to, to uh, come to God. And, oh, that's not true. And they have every right. And God had always planned to allow them to come in. Okay? Just like we had previously learned that the Gentiles were not to look down upon the Jews, okay, because of their rejection of Christ and the fact that they were a natural branch cut off the olive tree because God is able to graft them back in. Yeah. Okay, so that whole principle uh, or teaching of, you know, we're not in this to judge one another, okay? We're in this to help one another, whether you're a Jew, whether you're a Gentile, whoever you are, okay, we should be endeavoring to help one another. Okay, Paul also stated that God called him to be the minister to the Gentiles and to preach the gospel, okay, where it had not been preached yet. Okay, as we've stated, he was again letting the Jews know that the Gentiles being saved was of God 
And they needed to respect that. Okay? Not to look down on them because they didn't have a Jewish heritage. And he concludes chapter 15, asking them to pray for him to be delivered from his enemies. And we went over scripture, last Bible study of all a bunch of different things that the Apostle Paul went through. Okay? God blessed his ministry. God worked signed and signs and wonders through him. Many people were saved. We're still being blessed by his ministry. Yeah. Okay? But along with that, the devil fought him. Okay? And he asked them to pray that he would be delivered from his enemies and he would be able to make, uh, to deliver an offering that was taken up by the churches of Macedonia and Achaia for the church at Jerusalem. That's about where we end up, okay, at the end of chapter 15. We go into verse, or chapter 16, beginning in verse 1, and he's going, he's concluding the letter, the epistle. And he's going to show us and mention a lot of brothers and sisters, both, okay, that have uh, faithfully served the Lord, that have been a blessing, that have helped. It's not just a one-person endeavor. That's right. Okay, God needs everyone yes. to be a part. Okay, thank God we can be. Yes. Okay. So let's begin now in chapter 16. We're going to read quite a bit, and we'll go over some of it as we uh, are reading through it, okay? Chapter 16, and we're going to begin reading in verse 1. Okay, I commend unto you Phoebe, our sister, which is a servant of the church, which is at St. Crea, that you receive her in the Lord as become a saint, and that you assist her. And whatsoever business she had need of you, for she had been a succorer. And that word means a helper. Okay? She has been a helper. Okay? And uh, she has been a succorer of many and of myself also. Okay? So this sister, Phoebe. Okay, she had helped Paul and many others. That's what God put in her heart to do, to help people. Okay? And so Paul is telling them, help this sister to help people. Okay? Help her. Okay? He's commending her. Receive her. Okay? Okay? Help her in what the Lord wants her to do. We should be helping one another. And we're not, we're not, this is not um, a competition. No, it's not. Okay. It's not uh, someone trying to outdo someone else. Okay. To be seen of, of men. But we're a family. Okay. There should be unity in a church, as there should be unity in a family. Amen. Yes. Okay, there should be unity in the church. We should be helping one another. We've shared the words of uh, the founder of our church organization before. If we can't help you, we're not going to hurt you. That's right. And that should be our attitude. Let's try, let's try to help. Okay, but if we can't help someone, let's not hurt them. Okay, so we go on now into verse 3, and he begins to mention a couple that we see serving God together, a husband and wife. Can we read about them in other places in the Word of God? And they had quite a ministry also. Okay, verse 3, Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my helpers in Christ Jesus who have for my life laid down their own necks. Man, what a testimony. Paul was saying they have put their lives on the line for me. Okay. And who not only I give thanks, but also the churches of the Gentiles. Okay. 
Likewise, greet the church that is in their house. And then he goes on and tells us, salute my well beloved, Painetus, who was the first fruits of Achaia unto Christ. So he mentions this couple, and you can read about them in other places. I have some of it there on your study guide. Look at Acts chapter 18. Okay, beginning in verse one, and there's other there's other portions of scripture, but this is kind of gives us an idea of, of uh, how God was using them. And after these things, Paul departed from Athens and came to Corinth, and found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontus, lately come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because that Claudius had commanded all Jews to depart from Rome and, and came unto them. So Paul came to them. And because he was of the same craft, he abode with them and wrought. So they worked together, for by their occupation they were tent makers. Now, tent making was not the main focus of their life. They were making tents so they could preach the gospel. All right. Okay, that was their focus. Okay, <coughs> let's go down in chapter 18 of the book of Acts. We're going to be in verse 24. And a certain Jew named Apollos, born in Alexandria, an eloquent man. So this man was a good public speaker, okay? But he was also mighty in the scriptures. He came to Ephesus. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord. And being fervent in, in the spirit, he spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of John. So he knew that John baptized people under repentance, okay? And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue, whom when Aquila and Priscilla had heard, they took him unto them and expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. So this brother and his wife, okay, Aquila and Priscilla, they heard Apollos preaching, and he only had a, a, a certain amount of knowledge okay, about uh, what the Lord has done and wanted to do. And they had more. Okay. I'll take note. They had been with the Apostle Paul. They worked together. They probably learned quite a bit from Paul. Okay. But they began to help him and teach him things that he didn't know. This man, obviously, though, he knew uh, some about God, and he could tell people about God. He was humble enough to be willing to learn more. Okay, we need to have that attitude. Because God will bring people into our life who will help us, brother and sister, to learn Okay, the word of the Lord and learn about the Lord more perfectly. Did you understand what I'm saying? So he was willing to do that. Okay, he was willing to humble himself and to learn from them. Okay, God used them to help him. Okay. All right, let's look at one more portion of scripture. We read about this man. I had a hard time with his name. Okay, Eponitas. Okay, 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 15 is the top of your second page. I beseech you, brethren, you know the house of Stephanus, that it is the first fruits of Achaia, and that they have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. So he said the same thing about this man here as the household of Stephanus. So, he was probably in that group of people that have gotten saved. You know, we can relate to that. Okay, we we um, you know in our in our churches there are different churches. Maybe Hawaii. You can think about Hawaii. There were a group of brothers and sisters that got saved at the same time. They're under the same uh, ministry. Oh, those brothers and sisters, they all came out of Hawaii, the church there. Okay? There's a 
quite a few that came from Oceanside, two different times that we were there. If you think about Brother Torres and John Gardner, Stacy, Brother uh, Shane and 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 uh, Clayton, and Jacob, they're all buddies. Okay, you can think about these different ones and different churches, the same thing. Okay, so he was of this group that got saved there, of the household of Stephanus, however many there were. What a wonderful thing. Okay, they, they uh, grew up, so to speak, spiritually, serving God together. Okay? You know, we can become part of a body of believers yeah. and we can grow together with them. Yes. Yes, sir. You don't have to do this on your own. Thank the Lord. Yeah. God wants us to make, wants us to be a part of a family yeah. of believers. Yes. We draw strength from one another. We can help one another. Okay? All right, let's go on now. Okay, so we are down now to verse 6. Now, we don't know who this Mary is. It comes from the name Miriam. Okay, Greek Mary who bestowed much labor on us. Now, forgive me with these names, okay? It's all right. Salute Andronicus and Junia, my kinsmen and my fellow prisoners. So there's two... However, we don't know how, but Paul calls them, them his kinsmen. Mm -hmm. We know that he said of Timothy and Titus that they were his sons in the faith. He was simply telling us there that he won them to the Lord. But here it says that they're kinsmen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank God you can help win your family to the Lord. Okay. Who are of, excuse me. My kinsmen and my fellow prisoners who are of note among the apostles who also were in Christ before me. He's not telling us that they were apostles, but the apostles, the 11 that were before him, knew about these two. Okay, great. Okay, verse 8. Amplius, my beloved in the Lord. Salute Urbane, our helper in Christ. And Statius, my beloved. Salute Apelles, approved in Christ. Salute them which are of Aristobius's household. I always think about my brother Aristizabal when I bring that, okay? Salute Herodian. Here's another one, my kinsman. Greet them that be of the household of Narcissus, which are in the Lord. Salute Tryphena and Tryphosa who labor in the Lord. Salute the beloved Persis, which labored much in the Lord. Salute Rufus, okay? Salute Rufus, chosen in the Lord, and his mother and mine. Now he's, no, he and Rufus were not natural brothers, but Rufus's mother was like a mother to him. Okay, we can relate to that, okay? Let's look at, Let's look at something else here. We want to go to Mark chapter 15 on your study guide. You have it there near the top. Possibly could be the same Rufus. Okay. And they compel one Simon a, Cyr a Cyrenian who passed by coming out of the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus to bear his cross. Okay. So this could be the same Rufus that is mentioned there. Let's go on now. Chapter 16, verse 14. Salute Asyntrichus and Phlegon and Hermas and Patrobus and Hermes and the brethren which are with them. Salute Philologus and Julia, Nurses, excuse me, Nereus and his sister and Olympus and all the saints which are with them. Salute one another with a holy kiss. And the churches of Christ salute you. Now, before we begin, Sister Coker brought that up. 
And it is a custom, and it's still done today in the Middle East. You, you'll you see them when they greet one another, they'll kiss one another on the cheek. Okay, it's not only done in the Middle East, but it's done in Europe. The French do this, the Italians, well, maybe not so much as you go, uh, you know, into little, into uh, Great Britain or anything like that, but in Europe, they do it, still done today. He's not telling us that we have to kiss one another when we greet one another. It's just, that's the way they did it. We can think about the man, uh, the father of the prodigal son, right? When his son came home, the father ran and kissed him. Okay. What about when uh, Judas came to greet Jesus? Uh-huh. Okay, he kissed him. Judas kissed. Okay. So it's a, it's a, it was a, uh, it's a custom and it's still practiced today, but let's go back with our teaching. No, pastor, we got to kiss each other. <laughs> okay, it's a custom. Don't judge me because I don't do that. And I won't judge you if you do it. Okay, we shake hands. That's the Western way of greeting one another. Okay, you go to some Asian countries, what do they do? They bow. Far East. Okay, that's their custom. Okay, I've known sisters from uh, Japan, Korea, and they they become Americanized, but they still, when they talk to you, many times when they walk, walk up and begin to talk to you, they go like this. Yeah. Or somebody, like their pastor or something, they, they greet them. Okay. So don't, don't, you know, I won't judge you if you don't want to celebrate Valentine's Day. <laughs> don't judge me if I don't go around kissing people on the cheek, okay? Amen. <laughs> we shake hands. Sometimes we just fist bump. Depends. And okay, we still love you. Yes. Yeah, okay? Amen. We're not, uh, anyway, let's go on. Let's go to verse 17 now. Okay? Now look at this. This is, this is. We've covered this recently. Here it is again, and we've got some more scripture down here on your study guide. Not anything goes. Okay? And we're teaching that there's some things that don't matter. Don't judge. Okay? Don't, uh, you know, somebody wants is a vegetarian. Okay? Don't bash them. Paul said, Paul said, you can eat anything. He did. But he didn't tell you to eat anything. He said you could. He didn't tell you you had to eat everything. You eat what you want to eat. Yes. You want to be a vegetarian? Great. Okay, but don't condemn me. Okay, when I'm having some bacon with my eggs in the morning. <laughs> okay. okay. But anything doesn't go. That doesn't mean that we have a blank check to do whatever. Amen. It's not the way that God is. Grace is not a reason to sin. Okay? Thank God, brother and sister, we, we can receive from God the ability to live above doing things that are wrong. We will let God work in our lives that way. Okay, now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses. Now, we've been talking about offenses. Some things don't matter, some things, but there are things that do matter. It caused divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned. Somebody comes along and starts beginning, starts to spread heresy and starts to see, teach things that are contrary to the Bible, that's not acceptable. Okay? And do what? And avoid them. For they that are such serve not our Lord, Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. For your obedience is come abroad unto all men. I am glad, therefore, on your behalf, but, ye, but yet I would have you wise unto that which is good and simple, concerning evil, 
The God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. Woo. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Okay? So anything doesn't go. Amen. Okay, we're not, we're not to have strife and divisions about things that don't matter. But neither are we to fellowship with those who cause divisions and disobedience that's contrary to the doctrines of the Bible. Okay? People live in disobedience. They stop serving God. They cause divisions in the, in the church. And then when you avoid them because they're doing wrong, they want to accuse you of not loving. It's not true. We do love. But I'm not going to uh, let other people be destroyed because of someone who doesn't want to do right. Now, we have people in here, the vast majority, okay, have children. Have you ever had to tell your child you're not hanging out with them? Right. Oh, yeah. They are a bad influence on you. You're not, no, you're not hanging out with that person. Was it because you didn't love your child? You were protecting them from someone that would cause them harm. Okay, it's the same way in the church. Okay, we are our brother's keeper. We are to look out for one another. Okay, and if somebody will come in and harm someone, okay, I'd rather disfellowship with them than have them destroy other sincere Christians. Amen. All right, yeah. Okay, it's biblical. Okay, the devil is out to destroy people. He's tricky, he's subtle. We are to be wise concerning that which is good, okay? We are to yes. be thoughtful. We're to take what God is teaching us and practically apply it in our lives. Yeah. Think about what we're doing. And we're to be simple, okay, concerning that which is evil. It's very simple. It's not a complicated if it's evil, avoid it. Don't do it. Don't be involved in it. Didn't Jesus say if God, your eye offends you, pluck it out? Yeah, right. right? What about your hand? Cut it off. There's something that's going to cause you to do wrong. Get it out of your life. Don't be involved in it. If there's someone You know, you got to let the past go. You can't hang on to it. There are people that will absolutely drag you back down. This is true. Hmm? We love people. We want to try to help people. But sometimes you have to make that decision in your life. I'm not having anything to do with that person anymore because they're trying to pull me away from what God wants me to do. They're trying to drag me down. That's my friend. I have a closer friend. Amen. And it's Jesus. And we're not trying to be harsh or, or anything like that. Okay? But my friend, there's no one in the world worth dying going to hell for. Okay, let's go on now. Let's look at some other scripture that backs this up. Okay, Ephesians 5 and 11, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. 1 Corinthians 5 and 11, but now I have written unto you not to keep company. If any man that is called a brother be a fornicator, a covetous or an idolater or a railer or a drunkard or an extortioner, with such a one not know not to eat. 2 Timothy 3 and 5, he speaks about those that have a form of godliness, but deny the power the, thereof from such turn away. Titus 3 and 10, a man that is a heretic, okay, someone who propagates false teachings, unbiblical teachings after the first and second admonition, reject. Okay, 2 Peter 2 and 1, but 
There were false prophets also among the people, even there shall be false teachers among you, who privily, secretly, privately, shall bring in damnable heresies, false teachings, things that are not right, even, den even denying the Lord that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction, we are to turn away from them. From such turn away, my friend. Jude, okay, verse four. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God, our Lord Jesus Christ. We are to turn away from such. Yes, sir. Okay, let's finish up now, verse 21. Okay, continuing to name some people here. Now, I didn't put every scripture that uh, mentions Timothy because I'd have to put the whole first and second Timothy in there. Okay, but you can read first and second Timothy. Read about this young man. Read about him in the book of Acts. Okay, Timothy, my fellow worker, and Lucius, and Jason, and Sosipater, and my kinsmen salute you. Curtis, who wrote this epistle saluted you. Now let me explain that to you. Hold your place there. Go back to chapter one. Okay. Tell me when you're ready. Are we ready? Okay, look at chapter one, the very beginning. Paul, servant of Jesus Christ, called him an apostle, separated under the gospel of God. Let's go down a little bit. Look at verse seven. To all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you, the peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. This epistle is from the Apostle Paul. Okay, well, oh, Pastor, it says right there, it was written by the churches. Okay, it was dictated to him. He may have physically wrote down what Paul told him to write. But he's not the author of the epistle. No, we can understand that. We, and we live in a college now. <laughs> okay, they pay people. People get paid. If somebody may be a, a English lit major and and they can write, type fast, and make something sound really good. You may not. You may be an engineer. You may know what your thoughts are, but you have a hard time putting them down on paper. Okay. You pay somebody to type up your thesis to help you with it. Now it's your information, but they're writing, they're typing it out for you. That's legit. You can do that. Well, Paul used this man that was a scribe. That's what he did. Okay, man. I wish I could have let somebody type my notes when I was. <laughs> no, I don't. I like learning from them. Amen. And I learned how to type. Okay, so he used this man that was a scribe to write this stuff down. He dictated it to him. That's what he's telling us. Okay, this man that's writing it is greeting. He's throwing his uh, greeting in there also. Okay? Salute you in the Lord. Gaius, mine host, and of the whole church, salute you. Erastus, the chamberlain of the city, salute you. Quartus, a brother. Man, what a small, powerful testimony. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began and now is made manifest by the scriptures of the prophets according to the commandment of the everlasting God made known to all nations for the obedience of faith to God only wise be glory through Jesus Christ forever. Amen. That's so what he's telling us there at the at the end. Okay, so Paul and others saying goodbye. Okay, and he's letting us know, brother and sister, that uh, God is the one. Okay, God is the one that is letting it be known, and it was already prophesied about and we studied it last Bible study, various portions of scripture out of the Old Testament showing that God would save the Gentiles. Okay, we can couple this with Ephesians chapter 3 
okay, which teaches us a salvation through Christ, the salvation of the Gentiles is made known. It's not a mystery anymore. Man. God always wanted to do it. Okay. The Jews didn't see it. Okay. I mean, think about Peter. God had to show him a vision to get him to go pray with Cornelius, preach to him. Okay, he lowered down a sheep, didn't he? A bunch of different animals, clean and unclean. Peter said, oh, I don't, I've never partaken of anything unclean. God told him, what I've cleansed, don't you call it clean. This is the point that he's driving home here. Okay. God is, thank God, made a way for us Gentiles to be clean. Amen. Amen. Okay, so we're going to stop right there. And we ended up, God wants all nations to be saved, to be obedient to the faith. And Lord willing, next Bible study, we're going to begin 1 Corinthians. Okay. And just a little uh, preview of that. Really something that we all need to be mindful of. Okay. God bless them. The Spirit was working and moving in that church. Gifts of the Spirit were in operation. Okay. And it's kind of human nature when God begins to bless us. Sometimes we get the big head. Okay, some of them got lifted up in spiritual pride. Okay. Pride is deadly. It's what the devil. Okay. That's how he felt. Lucifer. And he really endeavors to use it on people. Okay. He got lifted up, began to allow things to happen that shouldn't have been allowed. Okay, and God began to show them through Paul's writings a more excellent way. We know chapter 13 is about what? Charity, love. Okay. That's how all men know. We are his disciples. If we have love. God bless you, Rose. Good to see you. Come on in. Come on in, man. Okay, so we're going to stop right there. Let's remember. Okay, Thursday, 7 p.m. We'll be back here once again. Let's go ahead and dismiss the Bible study tonight. And God bless you is our prayer. Brother Collins, will you dismiss us? Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for the lesson tonight, Lord, and Father God, we thank you for your word, for for the for the blueprint for, for our lives, Heavenly Father. And God, we ask you to help us to use what we've learned to to walk in your way, Father God. And as we leave here tonight, keep us safe and, and bless each one. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.